What's up everyone and welcome to another Rust electrical tutorial. I'm Austin and today I'm going to be covering how to build the new battery backup. Now this new version comes on the heels of the recent electrical update that was put out by Facepunch uh, and effectively made every version of any battery backup I made in the past obsolete. So we're going to start with a very simple version, just two batteries, one primary, one backup. And to build it, you're only actually going to need two items. You're going to need an OR switch and you're going to need two batteries of the same type. So whether that be two large batteries, two medium batteries, etc. Uh, these switches down here are optional. I'll talk about that later. Everything after the power out on the OR switch. So this branch, this switch, and this turret are all for just the tutorial and testing purposes of this video. So to set it up, it's very simple. You're going to have two batteries. One will be the primary, I've made the green wired battery my primary, and I've made the blue battery or blue wired battery here my backup or secondary battery. So the primary battery, the power out is gonna run uh, optionally through this switch, but importantly to the input A on your OR switch, and the secondary battery, its power out is gonna run to uh, through the optional switch uh, like before, and importantly to input B on the OR switch. And so the reason this matters is that the with the recent update, the OR switch, the logic gates were updated wonderfully, uh, such that one, they do not require power, nor do they drain the battery anymore. Uh, and two, the actual inputs now have a behavior more indicative of a logic gate. So if the OR switch receives power from two sources that are the same, and this is why it's important that your batteries match the same type, uh, it will pass the A side preferentially if they are the same. So what you'll notice is, for instance, if I turn on this, this turret here, uh, the you'll notice that the active usage on the primary battery, which in my case is this green one that is running through this switch to the A side, is the one that has the active usage. If you look at the B side, the blue one here, running through the B side over there, it has no active usage. Even though they're both hooked up, the update now allows for only the primary side, if, the, if they're the same, so the primary side being A, to be the one that registers the active usage with whatever is hooked up to it. This is huge, and this is why this works. Uh, and really, at, at that point, this is this is all you have to do to set this up. You're done, minus charging, which we'll co cover here in a second. But let's say I cut off power to the primary battery, which is again is our green battery. And currently, that is the battery that has the active usage. If I cut power to that, you'll notice that I've now switched over, I just have the B side coming in, and you'll notice that the blue battery or B side battery uh, has an active usage of 10, whereas this other one has zero, but let's pretend that it has no power, so it's dead. Uh, notice that when I'm switching between primary, but we're back to the green battery, now we're back to the blue battery. Notice that we are not power cycling anything that is hooked up past our OR switch. That is huge. That was one of the big things about the old system that was, you know, that we had to work to overcome. And that's what makes this such a great circuit is that we no longer have to worry about power cycling. You can lose power on your primary battery. Let's say maybe you uh, you lose some of your root power and you don't have quite enough and the battery dies, but then the next morning it comes back on. You can now have the primary battery bouncing in and out of power and it's not gonna affect anything in your system. And so what this, you know, it is a battery backup, but you can also kind of think of it as like a springed buffer in that if your primary battery dies, you sort of dip into what's ever on this side, and then you can come back if this gets a little juice, allowing this to, to charge back up. That's literally it. And so on that topic, as far as charging goes, all you really have to do is treat the primary battery like you would any major battery, any main battery you have in Rust. So in this case, I'm sending it, the green one here to the power in. I'm sending this, uh, looks like 140 Rust watts and whatever's left over in this case is 40, is just trickle charging this secondary battery. Now they've of course had time to fully uh, run up to capacity, uh, but I'm following the charging rule in that you know you have to determine your charging requirement based on your active usage divided by 0.8 will give you whatever you need for an equivalence point so you have to be more than that so in this case i'm assuming that i could use 100 active usage which is 100 percent of the, the the capacity of the battery and so 100 divided by 0.8 is 125 so i'm sending more than that just to give it extra oomph at night or whatever but you you know anything over 125 on average per rust day will keep this thing in a positive charge. So that's literally it. You know, I, I'm, I'm supplying primary charging to this, but based on the standard rules we talk about all the time. And then this one is just getting whatever it can get because it's only gonna be active when this thing loses power or is destroyed. Now we've swapped over. 
Now we've swapped back. Maybe it's morning. I've bounced back. I have a little bit of juice left. So that, you know, I think you can see the, the point here is that uh, this is a much different scenario than our other our other battery backups. And I think to to illustrate this, just how powerful this is, um, I've set up an insane amount of batteries over here uh, to illustrate what you can really do with this if you want. So this right here is 10 batteries, 10 large batteries uh, with a total out total power. If, if, if you had 100 active usage on your primary, so this red one over here, this is the primary. Uh, if you had a hundred active usage and that thing started to die and it would slowly make its way through all these batteries, you would have 40 hours. And that's with no root power whatsoever. So let me explain how I set this up. I think the first thing to do is to just start. I'm gonna turn this off for a moment. I'm just gonna start with what I've done over here. It's the exact same thing that I did with the single or switch and the two batteries is that I just made an ore tree. And so I simply took, I have 10 batteries, so that's two, four, six, eight, ten 10 inputs. And then I started trunking them together. So I have these four down here, brought those into one. I have these four over here, brought those into one. We have an extra two here, but nowhere to really take them. So I shared this or switch with this one and then ran this output to the B side of that one. And then this A one is from this stuff over here. The only thing you really have to do if you want them to uh, run in sequence and I'll, I'll, I'll kind of show you how that works. If I turn this on right now, we are on the red battery, which is this red line here. And that's running to this primary battery, which again, this primary battery, I have 140 again. And for these other ones, just as an option to show you that you don't have to do some crazy charging circuit uh, situation over here. Um, I just ran a solar panel to each input directly. This is just going straight to the solar panel. And since these are backup batteries, I just gave each backup battery its own solar panel, which is almost easier than running some big charging, uh, you know, block to, to distribute power, which you could do. Obviously, you could do that. Uh, but I just threw a solar panel on per one since they're backup batteries. Again, 10, 10 batteries is ridiculous. I, I don't think it was going to do this. I just want to highlight just how expandable this is. So all I'm doing is sending 140 rust watts to this one battery, which is my primary, and its output is this red wire here and that's running to the very first switch again optional uh, into the a side of this or switch and remember the or switch when they get both uh, the same inputs in 100 and 100 they're going to pass the a preferentially before the b so if i were to right now where we have 10 rust watts on that first battery if i were to lose power on that battery now i'm going to go to the second battery which is this green one you'll notice my 10 rust watts is on there everything else is still zero. And the reason for that is that currently I lost power in my primary, which means my secondary, which is this one, is coming in, which is going to the B side of this first OR switch. And then because its output is running to the A side of this OR switch above it, this OR switch is prioritizing the two for the A side, which is running up here, which is also running to the A side. And so it's running up here. So as long as you build a tree and you don't cross wires in different directions, it will follow uh, straight down the line because right now I'm on the A side of this whole side. This, this A right here trickles down through all of these. So if I were to then say lose power on my second one, it's been, it's been eight hours now and I've lost power. Now I'm on the blue one. See a 10 active usage, uh, zero, zero, and zero down the road here, all zeros. And that's because now I'm on the B side of this particular one, but that's still the A side of the final one, which is what's running out to the thing that it's running. And so, uh, you know, it, as you keep going, I mean, you know, now I'd be on this one, now I'd be on this one, now I'd be on this one. So right now I should be on the orange one based on the switches that I turned off. There it is. I'm on the orange one, simple as that. And something to know, and that'll just happen all the way down. And let's say I, I, Let's say I, I, I get some more power and my, my primary comes on. Now all these ones have been cut off and they would begin charging again on their own. You know, the switches are just as an example. Um, so the other important thing to note is I have this huge ore tree. I've got all these ore switches, you know, if just if you need to pause it right here and kind of get a practice wiring of this. And I've got all these, these uh, regular switches down here and I only have 10 active usage. And that's because the only thing that registers now after the update is the item itself when you're talking about logic gates. I'll, I'll link my my other video on this if you want to know more. Uh, but that's it. And you could, in theory, continue to do this 
to whatever size you want because this whole thing is free. It's not costing you power. It's not draining any of your power. The only thing that this battery is seeing is that turret and that's it. And so you can think of this as a big backup spring where if this dies, you'll dip into this. But if you get more power, this can come back on. And notice that when I was losing power, it doesn't matter what happens. I lose power, no, no power cycling of that turret, nothing. I can bring stuff back on, switch batteries all day. This will never power cycle. So everything that we used to have to deal with is over. So obviously you would probably not do 10 batteries, uh, but you could, you could do 10, you could do 20, you could, you could do 80 hours if you want. I mean, I think that's probably, this is all kind of excessive, but you get the idea. So uh, that folks is just about all I've got. If you have any questions or comments, you can leave them below. Otherwise you can get me on my discord. See you later.